Hello, 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 everybody. And welcome to Celebrate with L.A. Williams. My name is L.A. Williams, and I am steeped in gratitude and respect and reverence and wonderment. Today we are celebrating the, the one and only Miss Sharice Booth. Mm. Sharice, how are you, my friend? How are you? How are you? How are you? <laughs> I am well. Thank you, L.A. Um, again, mm. how are you doing? I'm doing really, really well. <laughs> I'm feeling great. I'm so excited to be having this conversation with you. Um, before I get into a more personal introduction, Sharice, um, I want to take a few seconds to talk about what Celebrate is and what it means to me, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. So this series is actually a manifestation of a moment I had as a very young theater student. I was at Alabama State University, and it was my first time ever seeing a play or anything. And I had walked over to the theater building, Lila Barlow Theater, and they were doing a play called Phaedra uh, by Jean Racine, directed by Dr. Tommy Stewart. Bought a ticket, sat down, watched the show, and Sharice, my life was changed. It was that moment for me where I was like, what is this? What is this? Wow. And I remember being completely swept over and overwhelmed with just like emotions and all the things. But I also remember feeling this important need to find everybody involved in that production and say thank you to them for what they had done for me. Ugh. They had changed my life and I needed to let them know that. Their work, it was just so stunning. And I remember going to see the show every time after that, I was like four or five performances that weekend and I went to every one. It was, it was I was low key obsessed and I was like, what is happening to me? Um, and when I think about sort of what Celebrate is and what the beginning of Celebrate is, that was that moment, that need to say thank you to people whose work has really inspired me. Cut to some years later, I'm living in New York City and I truly, Sharice, have this divine inspiration to start this sort of interview platform where I create space for some of those people to sit down and talk to them about like, what were some of the transformative moments in their life, in their journey, right? What were some of the moments that kind of made them say yes to this? Um, and here we are 10 years later, and we're all pulling through a global pandemic, something I never thought I would ever be saying. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm so glad that I have taken the time throughout this time to do many things. But one, go and see shows, really show up for the people who are still making work on the front lines, as I like to say. Um, and I'm so glad I did, but I'm also really glad, Sharice, and this is how I segue into talking about um, or introducing you. I'm glad that I've taken the time for myself in this pandemic ugh, oof, mm, to reflect and think about everything. And as I do that, I can't help but think about mm, moments on my journey after Alabama State that remind me of that moment in Lila Barlow Theater, performances that I've seen, work that I've seen, artists that I've come in contact with who changed something in me. Hey. God and Miss Sharice Booth. I'm so emotional. The fact that I get to have you in this space to say thank you in this way for your incredible life-changing, for me, life-changing performance in Lynn Nottage's Fabulation or the Reeducation of Undine. Hey, God. Oh my God. And no, that didn't happen during this pandemic or last fall or this spring, but it is one of those moments in my journey that I will never forget. And I needed to say thank you for that performance. And what I didn't know, Sharice, and we'll talk a little bit more about it later, but what I didn't know and what I've been thinking about recently is that performance is unforgettable for me <laughs> because it now is something, it was a precursor to what I would go through in this pandemic in some ways. Hmm. The journey of that character and how she had to start over and unpack and reconcile some things <laughs> mm -hmm. has definitely been <laughs> something I can relate to. And so when I think about why that performance struck me the way it did and that entire experience in the theater, I, I'm able to connect, oh, but also it couldn't have happened the way it did and it wouldn't be forever etched in my mind had it not been for you and your incredible artistry and work and brilliance. And so that is why I wanted to have you on Celebrate, to celebrate you, to thank you, to love on you and hold space for you. Wow. 
we just started and you're going to make me cry already. <laughs> My God. Um, mm. I, that really, um, that really touches me. Mm. Um, thank you again for inviting me to be, to participate in this mm. beautiful series. Mm. Um, that really touches me because one of the things that I always appreciated and enjoyed as a performer. And I think mm. the core delight mm. of performing mm. was to be a part of an experience mm. that genuinely moved mm. someone in the audience mm. in a mm. profound way. Mm. Mm. And you don't always hear mm -hmm. if if that has occurred. Mm -hmm. And when you do, when someone is moved enough to come mm -hmm. and thank you for mm -hmm. your performance, mm -hmm. it is always a gift. Mm -hmm. And in not so much in the ego way, but mm -hmm. in the way of like, oh, wow, what we did on stage mm -hmm. actually shifted something for you, in you. Absolutely. Um, and that is, I think that's such a great honor and privilege mm. as a performing artist to be mm. a part of that exchange, mm. a part mm -hmm. of that conversation. Mm -hmm. So to hear, <laughs> and maybe I'm even more emotional because it's, we have had the pandemic and it mm. has been a long time mm -hmm. since I've been on stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it's been a long time since I've actually felt a part of an artistic, mm -hmm collaboration mm. that feels as rewarding mm. as doing a play mm. does mm. and mm. having that live mm. uh, conversation. Mm. 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 Uh, so I think I'm extra emotional because I'm reminded. Mm. I'm like, yeah, oh, I love mm. that feeling. Mm. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Mm. And mm. how amazing art man, Lynn Nottage, mm. Mm. Uh, opening up a space for you not only to have the conversation in the moment, mm -hmm. but also later on and reflect, wow, this is actually commenting on, informing. Totally. I'm still having the conversation. Yes. With that yes. piece of art yes. that I yes. saw. Yes, yes. And I just, you know, ha you know, hats off to Lynn Nottage for hats creating off. that uh, that story. Absolutely. Uh, to, 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 to participate in lives like yours in that way. That's, oh that's pretty God. amazing. Oh so thank my God. you for that gift of share. I, mm. I really receive that and appreciate mm. it. You are very welcome, Sharice. Thank you so much. I appreciate um, everything, you receiving it. And I'm so glad I just get to say it to you in this way. And thank you for also shouting out the wonderful Lynn Nottage and everyone involved in that production, which again, we'll talk a little bit more about later, but I just, that, that was, my invitation, my introduction of you, and thank you so much. Um, Sharice, the way I like to begin these conversations is by starting off by celebrating the day you were born. <laughs> and I love this for some reason, because <laughs> it's an invitation for you to take us back however far you want us to go to wherever you want us to go. You can talk to us about your birth story, your early memory, young life growing up. Tell us whatever you want us to know. All right. Uh, I was born on October 17th mm. uh, in San Francisco, mm. and I grew up in the Bay Area mm. uh, around about five, I would say. My parents got divorced, and so mm. my dad ended up living on the East Bay, on the other side of the Bay, mm. in a place called Hercules, and my mom was in a place called Daly City. Uh, and I kind of went back and forth between two households, but up until the middle of high school, I was with my mom predominantly. And then eventually I moved in with my dad and my stepmother mm. in Hercules and, uh, ended up going to UC Berkeley, mm. um, as an undergrad. Uh, interestingly enough, I had done a couple of college visits and I went to UCLA and mm. my dad and my stepmother had it come with me to that college visit. And 
there was an African American studies component, and then there was a theater arts component. And I was like, maybe I could come to UCLA. And my dad and my stepmother strongly discouraged me from going. Mm. And I didn't find out until a little later that the reason that they discouraged me from going was because they thought if I went to UCLA, I would for sure become an actor. Mm. <laughs> and so they're like, go to UC Berkeley. It's closer. You can live from home. Da, 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 da. And at the time, I, the influence of my dad and my stepmother was very strong. And so I ended up going to UC Berkeley, met some really good people there. Uh, I, I am glad that I, I attended. And I ended up getting involved in the drama department there. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a school that was known for their drama department. Mm. Uh, but it was sort of like a, not so much of a, a scrappy drama department, but maybe in some ways it was. Mm. Uh, but it was like, despite Despite there not being a focus by the university on that department, there were still uh, enough quality teaching going on there that there were students graduating from that department and going into careers in the, the theater arts. And there were two, uh, two students who graduated a year before me that ended up going to NYU graduate acting program. And it wasn't until I had taken off a year, actually it was only supposed to be a semester, but I took off a semester, um, dropped economics three times because I was trying <laughs> to be a business major to mm -hmm. please my parents. Mm -hmm. um, my mother actually was always supportive of me mm -hmm. being an actor. Mm -hmm. um, I think she asked me one question. She was like, do you think you could, could do it for a living? And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, I think I could. And she's like, well, okay, if you think you can. Mm. But my dad and my stepmother were more in the practical, you know, uh, get a trade. And my parents are Jamaican. And so my dad and my mom grew up in the deep, deep rural country town of Moko. Mm. And so up in the mountains, mm. and they had to, you know, go to the city and then eventually mm. Mm. get to America in order to create a better mm. life for themselves. Mm. So that mm. immigrant, you know, story that mm. that uh, focus and need mm. to sort of have a reliable mm. way of making a living is understandable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it just wasn't what I needed to really focus on. Fortunately, mm. they had paved the road for me to have other opportunities. Mm. So I had dropped economics three times. I took a semester off and then took another semester off. I had a bad breakup somewhere in there mm -hmm. and took five years to graduate instead of four because of mm -hmm. that year off. Mm -hmm. And um, and, and because I was trying to figure out what I'm gonna do, because mm -hmm. I couldn't figure, I couldn't do what they were think, they were trying to get me to do, either be mm -hmm. a lawyer or a, mm -hmm. a doctor or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I ended up, in my last year there, this was now the sixth year, my last mm. year there saying, okay, I've tried. Mm. I am going to be an actor. And if mm. my dad, he had threatened to, to cut off financial support mm -hmm. if I was gonna major in, in drama. Mm. And so I never did. And then I was like, I'll minor in drama mm. and I'll major in African-American studies. I'll cobble mm. together some like classes and I will make my senior thesis a one woman show about mm. family that 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 deals with the African diaspora and and the immigrant story. Mm. And so I I got a, a I got a couple grants mm. to finance a trip to England where a lot of mm. my family was to New York mm. and then to Jamaica. And mm. it just so happened to mm. coincide with a family reunion that was mm. happening in Jamaica mm. that summer. Mm. So a month in England, a month in New York, and two weeks in Jamaica. Mm. And I wrote a one woman show about my family and my, mm. my family's pretty, pretty fractured mm. um, as a lot of immigrant families are, but mm. I didn't quite understand that at the time. Mm. And mm -hmm. a lot of people were coming to me afterwards and saying how they related to my story. Mm. Um, but I actually have 
uh, half siblings that I didn't grow up with. I grew up in Jamaica. I have I have two brothers and I have two sisters, mm-hmm. half siblings. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I, I have yet to meet one of my brothers, but I've met uh, my other brother and my two sisters. And we have loose communication. Mm-hmm. And I think that, that is, those are still relationships that mm-hmm. I am, uh, that still need some TLC. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went to, I did that for myself and I decided mm-hmm. I want to apply to graduate school and there was a, a couple of teachers at UC Berkeley who won uh, Laura Dolis, mm-hmm. who, <laughs> um, I'm laughing because I'm remembering when I auditioned for a, a musical that she was directing and I didn't come with a song. <laughs> and she was like, you don't have anything? I was like, no, because I was just eager. I wanted to be, and like, I didn't know the rules. Totally. And like, I just showed up and she's like, well, can you sing happy birthday? And I was like, yeah, I can do that. And uh, needless to say, I did not get into the musical. Um, <laughs> but I did take her class mm. and uh, she coached me on a, uh, a Cleopatra monologue from Antony and Cleopatra. Mm. And that was one of the audition pieces that I used to get into NYU. And, uh, and so um, I'm there deciding which schools to sort of like apply to. Um, I'm sorry, I'm jumping all over the story. No, here. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and um, another teacher there, um, Chris Harold, I gave him this list of like, I don't know, I think I was the New Yorker or <laughs> some publication that had this list of top grad MFA programs. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to audition to like the top 15 schools. And he was like, uh, I, it's just a bit much. I think <laughs> that you should probably just sort of like take it down to 10. <laughs> and for you, I would say the top five. And I'm like, mm-hmm. really? Like just really green and mm-hmm. not really mm-hmm. understanding what I had and what mm-hmm. top, you know what I mean? And so I was like, okay, top five. And at the time, NYU was the top, Yale was the second. And then there were, and then, you know, other schools came in afterwards and so I I applied to get all the brochures and I looked at all the brochures and NYU I don't know it spoke to me it's so weird just from the brochure I was like I see people who look like me and in the Yale brochure at least that year it didn't reflect anybody that looked like me and then I was like I think NYU and then I was like I took Chris's five and I raised it to one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But only auditioned for NYU. Mm-hmm. And a really good advocate of mine who helped me with my one woman show mm-hmm. at um, at UC Berkeley heard that I was only auditioning for one school. And he's like, I mean, you're great, but I wouldn't put all my eggs in one basket. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, note to self, do not tell anybody else. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Who's going to be a naysayer? Because mm-hmm. the only thing that can stop me from getting into NYU is my own fear. Come on now, Ugh. you know. And if mm-hmm. and if I keep taking in these these naysayers, then I'm going to just build in fear. Mm-hmm. And I think it was only my roommates mm-hmm. who were sort of like knew about it. And then I did tell my dad, and to his credit, he just nodded his head and he said, "Okay." Um, and it wasn't until later, because I told them the odds. I was like, 844 students applied last year, or, or prospective students applied last year, and uh, 14 to 18 get in every year. Mm-hmm. And he was like, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he didn't say anything. And I was just like, so those are my odds, and I'm going to do whatever I can to make mm-hmm. it. Um, and uh, I think I I did uh, some, I, I called those two students who had gotten in, Michelle Hines and Jeff Fierson, mm. and they were glowing about NYU and the relationship that they were developing with the craft of acting and mm-hmm. how they were learning about themselves and the mm. challenges that they were facing going into these deep dives of mm. you know getting things out of their way and i was like mm. oh my gosh mm. this is what i deserve if i'm gonna mm. do this for a living mm. a surgeon goes to school i need i want to go to school i want to get yeah. that support yes and so mm. 
I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And NYU sounds like exactly where I need to be. And um, I auditioned and um, I had a beautiful audition with Ron Van Lu, mm-hmm. um, who is the oh. acting guru who was mm-hmm. at NYU at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, he invited me to stay after uh, at the end of the hour to audition for Zelda Fitchhandler, who was mm-hmm. alive at the time and chair of the department. And um, usually you don't know that you're going to uh, come back at the end of the hour. They announce it mm-hmm. right before they release everyone. And so I had to sort of like walk into the waiting room and just sit down quietly and just breathe and be like, there are people here who don't know. So don't, you know, don't disrupt their process. <laughs> They made the announcement. I was called back at the end of the hour, as Ron said I would be, and there was Zelda. And then Ron was like, could you step back a little bit? Because I was up close. And then, of course, in my monologue as Cleopatra, she was moving all over, and then she came up really close, (laughs) which is what he was trying to avoid. But I was so in her and, like, her and talking about Antony. And, you know, I could do no wrong in that moment. Um, But afterwards, I was like, oh, he tried to get me to move back. Um, And then, uh, you know, Zelda, um, she... You know, she said, very good. And um, and I knew that that was, you know, rare for her to make comments. And she said, well, we would like to invite you back to the callback in New York. And I was like, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> and when I say, like, I was floating, mm, like, I was mm, just, mm, I, I was levitating, mm, but my feet mm, were on the ground. Mm, and I literally, in my head, was like, turn around. Mm. Walk to the door, reach out for the handle, turn the handle, pull it toward you, do not fall on the ground, close it behind you. There are people who don't know what's going on, people who still need to audition. Exactly. Excuse me, where's the restroom? Find the restroom, open the stall, go into the stall, close the door. And I was like, ah! like a silent shriek and I was just shaking myself just to get the energy out. I was so excited because finally I was doing what my heart had been mm. yearning yeah. for for so long, uh, all of those years mm, growing up. Mm. I didn't know I wanted to be an actor, but there mm. was there was a, a grace and a refuge mm. in the mm. work that allowed me to find a way to kind of escape what I felt like a small existence. Uh, um, I spent a lot mm. of time alone as a child mm. and I looked out and I, you know, watched VHS tapes. Yes, yes, VHS tapes <laughs> um, of different movies and shows mm. that I would tape that um, I watched Punky Brewster a lot. Mm. Like I, I watched Vacation Video. Mm. I, I watched Firestarter. I wanted mm. to be able to start fires. I wanted <laughs> telekinesis, you know. Um, and so uh, I, I felt small and I felt mm. lonely and mm. I felt like um i didn't understand or know what opportunity was beyond where mm. i was existing mm. and so i escaped into the characters that i saw on tv mm. and in the mm. film mm. um <clears throat> from my living room mm. and so when i found that i could perform um in you know elementary that felt good And then I got into high school Mm. and took a drama class. And then I was like, oh, you mean I could work on this and and get better? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I Mm. wanna do this. Mm. Um, And it gave me the room and the space to be bigger than I thought I could be or was. Um, And within the work, I I don't know, there was six, there was, the room to expand mm. in the work. Yeah. And um, uh. and so that ended up becoming very essential for me. And mm. so the fact that I was 
stepping into my own power and choosing my own destiny and things were moving forward in a good way, in the mm. way that I was wanting, mm. felt so just validating. Uh. And uh, when I, and you know, the whole time I'm journaling, like, you know, release the fear, you can mm. do this, mm. like months and months of journaling of just trying to like let go and know that this can happen for me. Mm. And, mm. and um, uh, my dear roommates at the time were amazing. Um, in, in, in supporting me, um, Laura, Yuvia, and Chris. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to the call back and I remember meeting Sterling K. Brown because he was mm -hmm. a first year at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was talking to me and, um, you know, he's like, Booth, you know, because he likes to call people by their last name, <laughs> you know, and he's like, he's like, how are you feeling, Booth? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and, and for a bizarre reason, we had met at UC Berkeley when he was there doing a show and mm. I was doing a dance uh, concert and he was mm. in the other theater doing a show, but they had, they shared backstage mm. hallway. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of funny that all these like different ways we meet. Mm. And I was like, I'm feeling <clears throat> nervous, but I know that if I just get out of my own way that I should be able to do this. He was like, I wouldn't feel nervous, Booth. You don't have to mm. feel nervous. I have a good feeling. And I'm like, mm. I, I, I hope you're right, Sterling. Mm. <laughs> <hope you're> right. <laughs> um, and then um, I, I did the callback and I got home to California because uh, the callback was in New York. And uh, I ended up answering machine. Yes, with a little cassette tape. Yes. <laughs> I, I got a phone call. and. And it was from Zelda, and she said, Sharice, mm. we would like to invite you to be an, a, next, a student in this next class, incoming mm. class at mm. NYU Graduate Acting. Mm. And um, she said, and I also want to say that you, oh, because what happened was when I talked to her at the callback, um, she said, how are you going to pay for this? And I was mm. like, I don't know. I don't know, I'll get a job. You know what I mean? This is what I want. I mm. will do whatever it takes mm. to make it work. Mm. And, um, and she mm. said, okay. And she said, I also want you to know in the answer machine that you have received a fellowship that will cover your tuition. And I was like, uh. so all I needed to do was pay for housing. <sighs> so it was just, I mean, you couldn't tell me anything. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, we should always follow our hearts. Ah. <laughs> um, and ah. so, um, you know, talk about from birth up until that sort of like very mm -hmm. significant um, mm -hmm. thing that I did. It was probably the first time that I've, I think it was the first time that I ever trusted myself enough and was courageous enough to follow my own heart on on doing something. So it was really significant. <clears throat> mm. um, and the journey was significant. And it was mm. like, you know, the way that I took myself through the journey and I was like, oh, okay, you knew what you needed to do when, mm. you know, you knew how you needed to <sighs> sort of like not listen to certain people and then listen uh. to others. and. Uh, you knew you guided uh, yourself through uh, this, right? God, yes. Yeah, so yes. it was it's really a powerful Oh time oh for oh me. oh Sharice, 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 Sharice. I am so holding everything you just put down. Thank you for sharing all of that. I mean, golly. Okay, so first of all, the fact that you are emphasizing right now, like the fact that you knew, I, I, we can't skip over that. We can't skip over the wisdom there and the lesson in that we, and we know, we know. And I'm just so thankful and grateful that you had the wherewithal at those points in your journey, at certain points in your journey to be like, okay, so I can't tell you no more. Right. And this is the safe space. So I can talk to my roommates and, and I'm going to say it to my dad and I'm going to, and I'm going to, you know, talk to the, it's a testament to how much we know and how much we already have. And I just, I, I wanna celebrate that, you know, I wanna celebrate your story and those moments of knowing, hey, 
And not just knowing, but trusting, Sharice. And, and this is the stuff we can't skip over when we talk about. We can't just be like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, we have to emphasize the importance of knowing and trusting and believing and trying and risking. I mean, because if I, I think why I'm so emotional hearing all this is because it resonates obviously um, with me, but also like, had you not known, I selfishly wouldn't have gotten, probably wouldn't have gotten that performance, your performance in Fabulation. But like, where might you be if you didn't have that, that just that, and it, it, it can be like a trickle of knowing, right? And sometimes it's not a big knowing or a loud voice, but I just, I'm so, I love that so much. Um, I also would just want to celebrate like uh, the Sterling of it all, the Zelda of it all, the Ron Van Lu of it all, the roommates of it all, like, you know, your dad. I love, there's something so powerful in that moment. And you say where your dad was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because, because, he knew, mm -hmm. even though he was afraid for me, he yes. knew that he, he, he didn't need to discourage me in that moment because mm. he could feel how much I wanted it, ah. you know? Yes. And it wasn't until I got in where he was like, you know, when you told me those odds, I was like, this is not good. But he never said that. Never said that. And, and it, that, was, it was so good that he didn't. Uh. Because he knew. He's, yeah, he knew. He knew. That's what I mean. That's why the importance of us knowing when and what and where and how and the awareness of it all. And to me, when I hear you say that exactly how you just said it, I think that's love too. It mm. is. It is. It celebrate is. your daddy and celebrate dads everywhere and parents and stepmom and mom. Another thing I want to just carve out or not even really carve out, but celebrate is the one woman show you did in undergrad. Like, and, and, and the way again, in which you put that together, Sharice, you did that. You did that. You were like, you know what? Okay. So I'm gonna like do this with the major and do this with the minor. And then I'm gonna go visit these places. Like, again, just, ugh. You know, um, and, 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 the, and the way that work impacted the folks back in Jamaica and, and whoever else got to see it. I mean, incredible. And the thing about that is, you know, you say it and it, it almost sounds a little cavalier, but, but the reason I did the one woman show and, and I, I told my, uh, uh, my advisor at the time, a graduate student at, at UC Berkeley, Maya Roth, I said, I'm choosing to do this one woman show because I really, it's something I'm afraid of and I kind of feel like I can't do it. Mm -hmm. And I know that I should be able to do mm -hmm. it, so I'm mm -hmm. gonna do it. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. totally, like fear was the reason mm -hmm. that I chose to do it because I didn't want fear to stop me from doing things. That's yes, right, that's um, right. And I, and I think that's a reoccurring theme in my life. Totally, honestly. totally, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I am, before we go, we move into sort of what happened after NYU, I actually want to go back just a few steps to ask you to paint a little bit more of a picture of life in Sandy, uh, sorry, San Francisco growing up. Um, were you the only child in the house? I'm curious sort of about the sort of interior life, you in the house, and then like outside of the house, like what was San Francisco like? Paint that picture for us a little bit. So inside the house, yes, definitely raised as an only child, even mm. though I have um, uh, siblings, the siblings, right? yeah. half siblings. Yeah, I was raised as an only child. I did spend a lot of time alone. There were moments where my mother would go to like a, a Caribbean day parade mm. or, or, or a picnic mm. rather. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. there would be some of her other uh, uh, West Indian friends mm. who would show up with their kids. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I had friends to play with mm -hmm. and that was really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one time <laughs> a friend, um, uh, one of her friend's uh, kid had chicken pox. And she's <laughs> like, I'll bring her over. They kept chicken pox together. So it was like <laughs> totally fun sleepover for a week or whatever of us yeah. having chicken pox yeah. together. Yeah. Um, and I found it's interesting because I I'm telling you this and I look back now and I'm like just further confirmation and understanding of how I am. Um, I, there was so much time spent alone, and mm. then when I wasn't alone, I would usually be surrounded by grown-ups. 
Um, and so I feel like there wasn't a lot of play mm. in my life. Um, there was definitely some play, but I think I would have wanted more. Mm. Um, and in terms of even San Francisco being so close, it was like a 20 minute, 25 minute car ride away from where we were. And most of my time was spent in the surrounding neighborhood. And mm -hmm. the, the surrounding neighborhood was mostly, was mostly an Asian neighborhood, Chinese and Filipino. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> and at my school, it was a little bit more mixed, um, but definitely a high Asian population mm -hmm. where I was. And uh, not much, not much going out and doing things every once in a while go to the movies uh every once in a while going to san francisco to go shopping at the department stores mm -hmm. but a lot of time spent home uh alone or even if my mother was there um in my own room you know kind of a little bit isolated unless you know we were doing something preparing something mm -hmm. Uh, for visitors or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for a good amount of time, when I was really young, my mother worked the graveyard shift to make mm -hmm. things work. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was a latchkey kid and I mm -hmm. would come home, let myself in mm -hmm. and never answer the door. <laughs> no, right, exactly, yeah, exactly. Um, and she would be at work uh, and then she would come back early in the morning take me to school and then sleep and then mm -hmm. someone would bring me home and totally yeah. um and my dad uh wasn't always available to babysit sometimes mm -hmm. he babysat um mm -hmm. and when he wasn't available to babysit he would actually take me to work with him mm -hmm. so he worked for a security systems mm -hmm. uh company and he would go and install repair and mm. program security mm. systems for folks mm. and uh, i would drive in his truck with him mm. i mean you mm. can't do that now right you know it was a product of the times <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that he was able to do that but mm -hmm. he was he was a consistent presence mm -hmm. in my life mm -hmm. um uh even though i think not having him in the household still had its effect on me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um in ways that i would uh you know, deal with later as an adult. Absolutely. Because, Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. So that's, Absolutely. that's pretty much my, you know, totally. And so with that, even today, I will err on the side of sort of not purposeful self isolation, mm -hmm. but there is a comfort in mm -hmm. solitude, mm -hmm. even if there is also a loneliness in it. Mm -hmm. And then when I get around people, and actually have a connection. I'm. I think I'm best one on one with someone. Mm -hmm. um, three is good mm -hmm. because uh, at least if the person isn't talking, they can listen to what's happening. Mm -hmm. But once it's four and like multiple conversations are happening, mm -hmm. once four or more, I kind of get a little overwhelmed and I don't mm -hmm. quite know where mm -hmm. to look. And like, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, so, but. What I do find when I am interacting with people in a real way, mm. it's like the best thing. Mm. It's the best mm. thing. And mm. I love it. I mm. love um, mm. connection with mm. others. And mm. then I forget. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I'm the, usually the last one to leave because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm craving it. Yes. You know, and, I'm, yearning, and I'm enjoying yeah. it. And I'm yeah. like, who else can I talk to? Yeah. Oh, they're closing up. They're turning off yeah. the lights. Oh, well, yeah. you know, and me yeah. and one other person are the totally. last ones to leave. <laughs> yes, you know? yes. Even absolutely. if I've said seven times that night over the last four hours, I'm about to go. I'm about to go. <laughs> I'm usually the last person. The sleeping by your feet. <laughs> um, I love that so much. You've mentioned earlier that you had um, done something in elementary school, I think theater related. I'm curious to hear you talk about maybe not so much what that was, unless you want to, but like, was that when you would say you were first exposed to the arts, the arts or, um, and, and I guess the real question is, when did you know before UC Berkeley that maybe I'm an artist or I'm, I'm an actor even? Like when did that moment happen before high school or? 
I think, I think when I was at home alone, mm. uh, and I would watch these mm. young female, mm. to me, heroines, mm -hmm. um, and you know, at the time, I didn't, I wasn't exposed to a lot of mm. black female young heroines. Mm -hmm. um, it's so beautiful that that's changing and mm -hmm. that's shifting now. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the time, I was always into like, s somehow the redheads were always having more fun, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so you have Pippi Longstocking, mm -hmm, so I, mm -hmm. I'd read books and, mm -hmm. you know, the strongest girl in the world and she had her hair out to here with mm -hmm. those nails, like they were on wire hangers and her feet was at the pillow and her mm -hmm. head was at the foot of the bed, mm -hmm. um, cause she was just different mm -hmm. and unique mm -hmm. and, um, cool mm -hmm. and, uh, I did, you know, one blonde, Drew Barrymore. I mm -hmm. I did want to be able to start fires. I know. <laughs> There's a the girl with the silver eyes. She wasn't a redhead, but I I did want to have telekinesis. Like mm. it's just so cool the idea mm. that I could mm. move things with my mm. thoughts. Um, mm. And you know, all of this escapism, mm. right? Uh, Punky Brewster. Um, I wore different color socks to school. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and Annie, little orphan Annie, I remember seeing the girls lining up, you know, to audition for the musical on the in the news. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Anne of Green Gables, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. a young woman who redhead orphan mm -hmm. um, had such spirit mm -hmm. and was always getting into adventures and into trouble. But, you know, she, her heart was good mm. and mm. um i just i love the kind of adventures that these young women were going on again escapism wanting mm -hmm. to sort of live a bigger life than i yes. felt i was living yes. at the time yes. and i remember watching this um uh rehearsal it was for a ballet mm. and um also too like i saw something with barishnikov it was a dance and i just saw this man dancing across the stage and i didn't know what sexuality was but i just knew i was mesmerized <laughs> and I, I swear i swear i didn't know what i was feeling at the time yeah, but yeah. i was like oh my gosh who is that mm. um and there was this uh rehearsal of a ballet and there was a stick being pounded mm. in the ground and mm. you know these ballerinas were doing mm. their thing and mm. It was sort of in that moment that I got this idea that being an artist, you mm. kind of had to suffer for your art and you mm. kind of had to just like, you were gonna go through some really challenging stuff, but that was the stuff that made artists. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of got that notion really early mm. and that put me in a place where I was willing to do whatever within mm. the craft mm. of art mm. Mm. um mm. i mean i i have a different feeling about it now i mm -hmm. really don't feel like we need to suffer for our art mm -hmm. i really mm -hmm. don't feel mm -hmm. that at all mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um, we actually need a, even more care personally. come on now come care, on now yes you know, to be artists because we're Absolutely. doing a lot we're doing a lot yeah um and 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 across all artistic mm -hmm. expressions we're absolutely doing a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, but there was something about that, that just connected enough for me so that when I was in elementary school and they had the little school play, um, uh, gosh, I even remember the little song that we had to sing. It was sort of like a game show, mm -hmm. um, like a trivia. It was, I went to a Christian school mm -hmm. uh, for elementary and mm -hmm. it was a game show and we had to choose. Uh, they had to choose people who were going to come up and 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 participate. Mm. And the song was like, choose me, choose me, choose me. I hate to say excuse me, but you'll lose if you don't use me. Choose me, mm. choose, choose me. Hey, mm. choose me, choose me, choose me. Mm. It really would amuse me and enthuse me if you choose me. Choose me, choose me, choose me. Choose me, choose me. I'm the smartest, I'm the best. Heads and heads above the rest. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> and I really like enjoyed that whole mm that whole exchange. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to say that it wasn't until high school where um, 
I got into that drama class mm -hmm. and realized, oh, that I can work on this and actually become better at doing this mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. If I can become better at doing this mm -hmm. thing, then maybe mm -hmm. that means I could do it like the people I'm seeing out there mm -hmm. doing it on TV mm -hmm. and in mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, being asked if I wanted to participate in a Shakespeare monologue competition. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes. And Lady Anne mm -hmm. from Richard III walking around the casket of um, her dead husband. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was so terrified mm. because, well, this was my first exposure to Shakespeare and I just wanted to be good. I'm a mm -hmm. recovering perfectionist, by the mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So at mm -hmm. the time, I didn't know that about myself. So like when you are a perfectionist, the fear of not being perfect can mm. be paralyzing mm -hmm. and it can stop mm -hmm. you from doing anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so luckily there was a young, a, a woman that my drama teacher brought in to help coach us. Mm -hmm. And she helped find a structure for me mm -hmm. to be inside of. Mm -hmm. And I just needed to fill it. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed, it's a very early lesson that I, mm -hmm. I didn't get until even now even, mm -hmm. that I'm talking mm -hmm. to you about this. Mm -hmm. But the lesson was, um, I, I had memorized and all this stuff and I remember, um, doing it in front of my teacher at the time, Stanley Burgoyne. Mm. He really helped me. He really helped cement the idea that I could do this. Mm. Um, he was there. He's like, well, okay, show us what you, what you've been working on. And I was like, I, I, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm ready. And he was mm. like, well, just, it's fine. Just, just show us what you're, what you're, what you're, um, what you what you've worked on, what you've done so far. Mm -hmm. And so the, th I ended up committing mm -hmm. in a way where mm -hmm. I put myself in it a hundred percent. Like I didn't halfway, mm -hmm. I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I think there is, if, if there's anything that's a superpower with me mm -hmm. is if I'm committing a hundred percent, I am in. Uh, and uh. I did that because I didn't know how to do anything else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I committed a hundred percent and then all of a sudden, that was the first time that I experienced actually having uh, feelings that my character is mm, having. Mm, and then I started crying mm, and I had this rage mm, that my character had. Mm, mm, and I, experiencing that sort of emotional life mm, run through me mm, was bewildering. And so I mm, stopped, and so at the end of it, I was a little bewildered mm, coming mm, back into I was like, what just happened? Was that me? How? Mm -hmm. And I didn't, and even because it was so new, I was like, how do I do that again? Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. so new. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. and then my teacher was sitting in the audience in the theater and he just shook his head and he was like, you're fine, Charisse. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I totally received that and I knew yeah. it was a compliment and I yeah. knew I was okay. Yeah. Um, but I was like, I hope I can do it again. Yeah, you know exactly, I mean? exactly. Yeah. So it was that moment mm. that I was like, something had turned over mm, and I was like, mm, mm. there was yeah. something about that moment and his encouragement and support of me that said, I can do this. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sharice, thank you. 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 Thank you for that. Um, I love that so much. Um, just two things I want to point out really quickly that you said a couple times in this conversation so far. Um, you've used the word exchange um, and you've used the word or something you said earlier that's been sticking in my head. Um, expansion like being able to expand beyond. And, and, I, and, I, and I, I carved those out just to say that I felt that exchange in your performance mm -hmm. as Undine. Um, and uh, I felt that conversation, I felt that exchange, and I felt that expansion. Like now that I'm hearing you talk about it, it's like I can see you dropping into that in the way that you did and expanding and like and just going beyond and 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 so much so that it allowed me to like get in or be on the ride i mean it was just stunning so sorry but because but when i think of you i think of that performance and hearing you talk about some of these things i'm like oh it all makes sense um thank you so much for for reliving all of that juiciness sharice um 
what happened after on your journey after grad school? Um, you know, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, and, and I guess if, if you want to, you can even share, like, if there was a sort of seminal moment for you at NYU, because we talked about how it started at NYU, but like, you know, um, was there a moment that shifted things for the good or for the not so good? And then what happened afterwards? Um, for the moment at NYU, that, that really, um, hmm. So first I'll say uh, that one of the important lessons that I learned at NYU, hmm. uh, it, it, it unfortunately wasn't the first and only time I learned that lesson, but hmm. it was the first time I learned the lesson and the lesson is hmm. not to abandon yourself and mm. your instincts hey. and to, to really trust what you have ah. to bring. You can add to it, but <laughs> don't ever dismiss yes. what you're coming in with. Yes. And I think ah. what I ended up doing was I came into NYU and I was like, okay, you're gonna make me better. Let me take all that I brought, I'm gonna put it over there and only take what you, cause you're gonna make me the best, right? Right. I didn't know any better. <laughs> and by the end of second year, mm, mm. Um, or the middle of second year, I would say, I was really falling into a deep depression because mm. I, I, I didn't trust myself. And mm. I, I mm. only saw the attributes in the rest of my classmates and felt like I, I could only see the ways in which I perceived myself to be inferior. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of going in, 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 in. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, I was playing a clown in uh, a show called Red Noses, uh, mm. being directed by Chris Bays. Mm. And the clown's name was Frapper. And mm. she, you know, had a hat and she had a man suit on and a tie. Mm. And, um, and one of the, one of the clowns, in the other, in the show, uh, it's this troop of clowns that goes across uh, to different parts of the area mm. to entertain the people during mm. the Black Plague. Mm. And I auditioned to get into that group in the show. Mm. And my, uh, my clowns, uh, or my, my skill is to tell jokes. Mm. The thing is that when I speak, I stutter. And when I stutter, Chris Bay said in one rehearsal, when you stutter, you stutter with your whole body. <laughs> and so I would stutter with my whole body. And by the time I got to the punchline, well, you've probably already guessed it. Um, and also seen me d dance a jig. And so uh, there is a moment where one mm. of the other uh, members of the group whittles me a doll that looks like me with a red nose and mm. gives it to me. And mm. when I have this doll, mm. I speak the most beautiful poetry, mm -hmm. clear as a bell, and that's what's inside of me. But there is something about her that I think I lent to her from me, which was mm -hmm. she just seemed like somebody who was a kind of afraid of everything, mm -hmm. but also interested in everything. Mm -hmm. So she was a little trepidatious, but still wanted to be there, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like that is so me. <laughs> that is so, mm. such a big mm. part of me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we were rehearsing for the show and I had a really hard time rehearsing for that show because mm. I, I, like I said, I was falling into a deep depression and mm. um, the stage manager, God bless the stage manager would come out and say, okay, uh, so-and-so five minutes till we get to you. And she said that to me, and 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 I I would grab the script and like furiously try to rem like l l read the lines and memorize them really quickly before I went in because mm. otherwise I was just sitting there, mm. not doing anything. Mm. Mm. Um, and Bev Weidman, mm. um, who uh, was a teacher there at NYU, mm. um, who was all love, mm. all love, mm. Mm. Uh, the one black faculty member. Mm. Um, I mean, she diversified the faculty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. She saw me and she she worked with us on voice. Mm -hmm. um, but she was sort of watching, overlooking the rehearsal for that show. And mm -hmm. she saw me and she said, hey, Sharice, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. And I was off in the bleachers, off to myself at 
the mm. time that she came up to me and I thought to myself, do not touch me, just go away, go away, mm. go away, mm. don't mm. talk to me, don't talk to me. Mm. Mm. Inside I was thinking this and she reached over and she put a hand on my back and she said, how are you doing? Mm. And I just burst into tears mm. and she said, you've got to talk to somebody, you've mm. got to let this mm. out. Mm. And it was from there that I went and saw the counselor that was assigned to that floor and um, in one way or another, I've had therapy since then. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes little blocks of time without therapy, but from like 2005 up until now, I've been, you know, doing therapy. And, um, and it, 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 it was a huge thing of me abandoning myself. Mm -hmm. And by mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. I got to mm -hmm. my third year at NYU, this is the second moment that it was significant for me is I got cast in a Susan Laurie Parks play called In the Blood, mm -hmm. and I was cast as a lead. Um, and, you know, this mother is a mother of five. She's mm -hmm. homeless. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, five different men that she's been involved with for each kid. And mm -hmm. uh, the play is Greek in that it starts off in a really kind of really low place and then mm -hmm. it only gets worse mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i remember a classmate of mine who was also cast in it uh j kyle manzay was like did you read it mm -hmm. and i was like yeah i read it you know and the way it's written it's written like poetry mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and there was something about that that mm -hmm. <laughs> it's probably the exact opposite because poetry is potent but there was something about the way that it was written that it was mm -hmm. like, oh, there was a lightness. It mm -hmm. wasn't like blocks, mm -hmm. the, the whole, it, there was a lightness of how it was written. And mm -hmm. I said, yeah, I read it. And he was like, yeah, this is gonna be tough for you. And I was like, <laughs> it is? He's like, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I went into the rehearsal process. Um, Michael Sexton directed it. And I, I said to myself, all right, you're gonna trust yourself. You're gonna mm. you're gonna go with your gut feeling on every choice you mm -hmm. make about mm. this mm. role, mm. and you're not gonna be afraid if your ass is in the wind. Mm -hmm. Trust that Michael will cover your ass mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. if it's out in the wind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just do your thing. Mm -hmm. You have to be kind to yourself in process. You have oh. to be kind to yourself. And man, I'm like, who was that wise soul <laughs> speaking? Because I've needed her since then, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but in that moment, I found the clarity of that mm. directive and, mm. and I trusted myself. And I think he gave me like, I think that one time during the process early on, maybe we were in at the end of our first week, he was like, he cleared the room. He's like, all right, everybody, I just wanna to talk to Sharice. And I was like, oh, okay. But I was like, cool, cause I was actually trusting myself and I'm feeling good about the work mm -hmm. I was doing. And he said, I, I kind of feel bad because I'm about to ask you, what I'm about to ask you is gonna, I'm literally asking you to feel pain. Mm -hmm. So I feel kind of bad, but I think it's time to up things a notch. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, I got him. Because up until then, what I was doing was just moving through the play, mm -hmm. easy, mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. he was asking me to go to the next level of emotional mm -hmm. connection mm -hmm. to what's going on with her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I understand. Mm -hmm. But I was so willing to go there. And, and then it was like, I mean, I, I, I think, I, I think, one of the things that this art form does for us, um, it gives us room to take the stuff that we have accrued, acquired, mm -hmm. that isn't so nice and mm -hmm. doesn't feel good, mm -hmm. but we can lend that to the mm -hmm. service of our mm -hmm. characters. Mm -hmm. And some people mm -hmm. are like, oh yeah, you're using your character for therapy or what have you. Um, and, I, and I understand that, I understand that perspective, but mm -hmm. I also understand mm -hmm. um, when you are able to um, lend 
your your emotional, mental, spiritual, physical mm -hmm. bodies mm -hmm. to the service of your character, yes. to serve the character, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. to say, look at me, I'm great, mm -hmm. but to serve the character mm -hmm. and what they're going through. Mm -hmm. If you're able to do mm -hmm. that, if you're mm -hmm. able to craft that and mm -hmm. you're able to actually mm -hmm. listen, because at mm -hmm. one point in time, Michael said, you know, oh, in this moment, um, I think you were in the midst of the breakdown, mm. maybe a little longer than you needed to be. I was like, got it, <laughs> got, got it. it. And it mm. wasn't like, well, this is how I felt in the moment, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna do me mm -hmm. and you be over there. It's mm -hmm. like, no, mm -hmm. that wasn't serving the entire story. Mm. So let me move through that portion mm. a little quicker. Mm. That ain't no thing, That ain't because no it's not about me. Right. And I remember um, doing that show, um, And afterwards, a young woman who was a student um, at NYU, she had a really visceral response to the show. Mm. And when I s looked out of from backstage after we were done, she was being helped, almost carried out, mm -hmm. like helped mm -hmm. walking out. Mm -hmm. She was sobbing like outwardly audible so sobbing mm -hmm. based on what she had experienced in the mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, we did that? Mm -hmm. Damn. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then Ron Van Lu came backstage and he doesn't stay afterwards. Mm -hmm. He talks to you about it the next day in class, mm -hmm. whether he liked it or he didn't, mm -hmm. he says it all. Mm -hmm. And he came backstage and he came to each and every one of us in the cast. Mm -hmm. And when he came to me, he just looked at me. And you could see the tears in his mm. eyes that mm. were wet. Mm. And I was like, hi, Ron. And he just mm. kind of did this. Mm. And he couldn't speak. Mm. And I just hugged him. And I was like, mm. thank you, Ron. Actually, mm. I don't even know if I hugged him because I, mm. I, he felt like a deity to me still. <laughs> so I think I was just like, Thank you, Ron, you know, and I, it was so meaningful because mm. he, he didn't talk to me about it. And mm. I heard through some other people like, oh, Ron was saying all of this about the play or Ron said this, um, but he said so much mm. in such an honest, truthful way. It was such a, it was one of the highest compliments I could have gotten because Ron was honest, mm -hmm, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No BS from Ron. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so that was really special and it mm. was it was nice to know that I had been kind to myself in the process. Mm. I had been gentle with myself and I went to places that were difficult and hard uh, for this character. Um, but I think because I was so trusting of mm. myself, I was so kind to myself, mm. it didn't feel like mm -hmm. it cost me. Like it didn't yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. it was, um, it wasn't torturous. Yes. And so yeah. afterwards I was light. I was light, I was light, I was light. Mm -hmm. Even about to do the show, I mean, I remember myself sort of like getting ready and joking with my castmate, getting ready to do the show. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't like this heavy yeah. thing. And, and yeah. so I think um, that was a very significant experience. And mm -hmm. I think, I sometimes think about that experience and think, oh, wow. I've got to get in touch with that that young wise one to bring that into the present moment yeah. and the things that I'm doing right now because yeah. she knows she, she knows. knows how to do this. She knows how to do it. To do it well. Yes. To do it with integrity. Mm -hmm. um, to do it on a level of excellence that's mm -hmm. really about just serving the character. Mm -hmm. How do I? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm do that mm, mm, um, mm. and and to do it without like beating up on self mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, without mm -hmm. any yes. torture yeah Sharice 
first of all, I can talk to you until the day is long. Okay. <laughs> I can listen to you um, share these beautiful gems and just experiences. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you for introducing, just going back my brain, the way it works for introducing the word depression into this space, the word perfectionism into this space. Like, thank you for sharing those things. Um, it is not lost on me. Um, 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 the importance of having this kind of conversation and, 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 and putting those words out into the space. Um, so listen, fabulation <laughs> or the re-education of Undine. I don't really have any questions built into this moment. I think I just wanna reiterate my gratitude um, and my, my respect for your work in that show and the work of everyone involved. <laughs> And if I could sit down with every single one of them, Nakia Mathis, Heather Alicia Sims, Maya Boateng, uh, directed by Liliana Blaine Cruz. I mean, I think I said Jay Calloway, Marcus Callender, all these incredible Ian performers. Lassiter, Ian Lasseter, yes. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. The, I mean, the designers, the, uh, I think of Adam Set. I think of Montana Levi Blanco's costumes, like, Child, I was just, I was, it, again, it reminded me of that first experience I had um, of seeing theater um, in that it changed me, it shifted me, it inspired me so much. And so much of that was because of your performance, Sharice. And I'm just, I, I think, I don't know right now in this moment if I'm more grateful for the performance or the fact that you said yes to this moment so that I could say thank you for it. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I, I'm, I'm just in awe. Um, I think that you are a prolific talent, my friend. And listen, and I try, just for everyone who's listening, I try very hard not to get into LA's um, um, evaluation of a project. Like, you know, I'm just telling you how I feel about a thing. I'm not, this is not my review or whatever. These are just my feelings. And, and I have to say, uh, Sharice, oh, child, like, I think that you... You are a legendary talent, my friend, a legendary yeah. talent. And I will say to that, it's crazy because when I think about it, your legend preceded you, meaning I remember hearing people say to me, because I've spent a lot of time on the fifth floor because I have dear, dear friends who've graduated from the graduate acting program, um, the great Cara Patterson, oh, my sister, um, uh, Carl Lewis, I mean, Kareem, everyone, I mean, just so many people. And, and I would, and I, so I spent some time there uh, over the years. And I remember people being like, do you know, because people know I love, I love, I love artists. I love, and they were like, do you know Sharice Booth? And I was like, no, no, no. And they were like, oh, but you got, but I had forgotten all that when I had gone to see the show. So anyway, I'm just saying that I know I'm not the only one who feels this way is my point. Um, and, and I just want to, I just want to celebrate you for this entire journey that you shared with us and the journey that you'll continue to be on and your incredible, awe-inspiring, life-changing fucking work, Sharice. Like, we're not gonna skip over that. We're not gonna skip over. <laughs> First of all, you doing the song from kindergarten, from elementary school, <laughs> it's everything my soul needed. And the fact that you know every lyric and every beat is amazing. But like just the one woman show in undergrad to like the in the blood and the woman, the young woman needing to be carried out. Sharice, that's you. That's what I'm trying to tell you, friend. I don't just have you on my Zoom for no reason. You, there's something that you carry and you talk about serving and lending. Sharice, you are changing lives, sister. You ain't just on the stage acting. I see acting all the time. You are doing something else. And that's why I was like, let me get Sharice on this platform so I can say it to you in this way. So thank you, sister. That's really it. That's really, that's really, that's, I mean, we can't, we can't underestimate the power of what we do. We can't. And this is something I have to remind myself of every single day. LA, you have LA, I, I have a power. I have an, an effect, an impact that only I can make. And I have to remind myself, so how am I going to use that power? How am I going to remember it? How am I going to trust it? How am I going to hold it? You know, and, and, and know how to talk about it with certain people and not other people. I mean, all the things. So Sharice, 
I can go on and on, but I just, that's the, I just needed to say that about that performance. And that was just the one thing that I happened to catch you in. Hearing you talk about In the Blood, I'm like, I can only imagine, I can only imagine. So listen, um, thank you for that. Thank you for that performance. Um, in the spirit of lightheartedness and fun, I like, and, and also getting to know you just a little bit better. I'm doing this thing where I'm asking you to just tell us a couple of your favorite things. It can be your favorite food, your favorite city, your favorite anything, um, just to, I don't know, be cute. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite things. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely, I definitely love a sunny day and mm. a crisp, mm. a, just a, a crispness to the air. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, those days seem magical to me mm -hmm. when I'm inside and I come out and I'm like, the air kind of like is refreshing, but the mm. sun is shining. It's, 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 I think uh. it's the best part of spring mm. um, or mm. maybe early morning, you know? Mm. Um, I'm definitely a weather, weather person. Mm. Um, the sun is my friend. Mm. Um, I actually like, I don't have them anymore, but one of my favorite things for a long time was those vanilla pops with uh the with the with the chocolate on the outside mm. and you bite into it's frozen it's a crispy chocolate mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite things <laughs> <laughs> um and i think another one of my favorite things is is dancing and getting mm. in a groove mm. uh even you know just free but free mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but free, free. Yeah, free, yeah, yeah. Free and getting in the groove and freedom and the delight of my body just mm. lighting up mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. in the music. Mm. Uh, when your body and the music align, yeah. and you're just like, yes, this ah, is it. Aha, uh -huh, yes. uh -huh, you know, uh -huh, uh -huh. you just feel that groove. Yes. That's one of my favorite things. Yeah, oh, that's so beautiful. Um, <laughs> I love that it's like, let's just ask some cute little questions. And then you say something so profound, like when your body and the music, and, and I know that freedom that you're talking about, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, also something coming up in my brain again, let's celebrate Bev Weidman. Yes. yes. Let's celebrate, let's celebrate Bev Weidman, yes. who I've had the pleasure of, again, I did not go to school at NYU. I've only spent some time there and had heard about her. Um, from so many students, but I've had the pleasure of meeting her very recently. Um, um, and oh yes, gosh. yeah, 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 yeah. I actually, a close, close friend of mine is close, close friends with her, and we all hung out two months ago. That's um, amazing. Um, and so, and 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 it, and it dawned on me, my friend who's friends with her was like, "Oh, Bev Whiteman, she's a teacher." And when you and I was like, "Why have I heard that name?" And I've heard Kara and Nakia and Marinda and all the people talk about, you know, um, Bev. So. Um, Anyway, I remember when she retired. So anyway, celebrating Bev and celebrating um, just every single, every single thing that you said and shared today. Um, Sharice, I like to, to wrap these conversations up by asking three questions. Okay. The first one being, what does it mean to you to be celebrated? Um, really embraced and accepted mm. as I am, mm -hmm. mm. like as I am mm. with all of my whatevers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. my shortcomings mm -hmm. and my strengths, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just as I am, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is, I'm enough mm -hmm. is a full on fucking celebration it's a fucking celebration a full on full on celebration oh uh, uh, god thank you for that i love that so much what or who do you celebrate i lately <laughs> lately i've been celebrating a self-compassion mm-hmm and compassion for others mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, in an effort to to find an 
easier way of being in this world. Mm. There's so much going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's so much mm -hmm. divisiveness, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. taking sides, mm -hmm. fighting, mm -hmm. and um, and also uh, on a sort of separate note, uh, there's all sorts of like pressure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to be and do mm -hmm. like this multi-hyphenate world that we're in. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. um, I just, I want to release mm -hmm. myself from mm -hmm. that pressure because mm -hmm. it doesn't feel good. It's not mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. I don't enjoy living in mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. um, I know that for some people, they are making a conscious choice to mm -hmm. go down certain mm -hmm. avenues, certain roads. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of the world that we're in is that everybody gets to make that choice. <laughs> you know what I mean? If, it, if, if for whatever reason that is what is working for you in this life and this time, you do what you need to do you for need you. You need to do for you. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I have found for me, it only increases my anxiety. Mm -hmm. It only... Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm puts me in a place where I'm harder on myself than I need to be. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's not a healthy route. Mm -hmm. And so listening to myself, mm -hmm. um, really getting quiet and hearing what is it that I want versus yeah. hearing the social media mm -hmm. of what society mm -hmm. says mm -hmm. I should want mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, helps me so and part of that is having compassion for myself and then the other part of it is if i'm being compassionate with myself if i'm truly being compassionate with myself i'm going to be compassionate with others with others i'm going to be that's where and it's born I, yeah you know because it's uh, i don't know you can't have one without the no, other no 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 it's where it's um, born it's where it's born yeah so so that's yeah. what i celebrate right mm -hmm. in this right now more than ever is self-compassion Gosh, um, uh, and just by just from what we already said, like, and it also feels, oops, it also feels um, generous too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. it feels like it's not just for me; it's for mm -hmm. me first, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's really for everybody. It's for the collective. Yeah. Oh, that's so juicy. Um, <laughs> I feel like you've already answered my final question, but please feel free to add or, um. What do you do to celebrate you? Um, um, sometimes if I can really get myself to do it, it's sort mm -hmm. of like, come on, Sharice, I'll take a nap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, walk in the sun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, dancing is mm -hmm, something. Mm -hmm. I recently, um, uh, celebrated myself in two ways that I'm mm. excited about. Mm. I started taking singing lessons. Mm. Uh, one of those things that I um, dabbled in a little bit when I was younger and mm. haven't been really consistent over the mm. years with it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and always felt like, oh, it's too late. It's too late. And then I thought to myself, why is it too late? Mm. And for who? Mm -hmm, I don't need mm -hmm. to impress anybody. Mm -hmm. This is for me. Uh -huh. I get to do this for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking singing lessons. Mm -hmm. And then I also invested in um, in a digital piano, mm -hmm. a little digital upright piano, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so that I can start learning how to play. Mm -hmm. I started that a long time ago and never mm -hmm. kept up with it. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. why not? I don't have to be a concert pianist mm -hmm, to do something mm -hmm. for me. You right. Know? Yes. So those are two ways in which I am celebrating mm -hmm. myself. As Gosh. Well. <sighs> Shreese, I just, I feel so honored and so grateful um, that I got to celebrate with you today mm -hmm. um, and that you celebrate with me today and, and, I celebrate you every single time you enter into my mind. Mm -hmm. um, I am so appreciative and thankful. Um, you are so important to our community. You mentioned earlier, you know, sometimes we all feel like 
we're missing that collaboration, that togetherness that you can only find making plays. And the only thing I have to say to that, if I can offer anything, is that like, while we are not always in those moments that we all want to be in, like you are so vital. You, Sharice, mm -hmm. are so vital to that community Thank of you. artists. We all love you so much. Again, before I even knew who you were, I hadn't heard about, you know, um, and I think you've shown that in sharing today your story and just I just I'm just so full um I'm so blessed by this and I just am so glad that I got a chance to like love on you in this particular way and say thank you and I will always say thank you for this I'm gonna be we're gonna be 93 Sharice and I'm gonna be like you know <laughs> you did a thing at some theater that I don't remember <laughs> I'm still gonna be celebrating and saying thank you because you truly with that performance changed the way I see theater the way I experience theater my love for theater it reignited all of all of the things that I needed to have reignited and as I said gives me something now in my own journey where I am now in my journey to look back at and go oh okay that was that was that was something that I needed to see and remember as I move through this phase of my own life. So it's just, I don't know, Sharice. I don't know, Sharice, but I'm gonna leave it there. Um, and um, is there anything else on your heart and mind that you'd like to share before we wrap it up? I just wanted to say thank you, L.A. Williams. I really appreciate you creating this space for not only mm -hmm. me, but mm -hmm. other artists to come mm -hmm. and just share mm -hmm. our journeys. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate the light, the celebratory nature, mm -hmm. the love, mm -hmm. the loving holding that mm -hmm. is here mm -hmm. that you have provided mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. really, really special. Mm -hmm. And I am honored that you asked me mm -hmm. to, to be a part of this truly. And mm -hmm. uh, so glad that I met you on the mezzanine floor of yes! the theater that day. Yeah, yeah. And we had that really lovely conversation. Some lovely and conversation. And I was like, oh, wow. I look forward to having more of those. Yes, You know, I remember yes. thinking that. And yes. I was like, I'm so curious what this means mm -hmm. in order, because you were talking to me about a journey you were on, mm -hmm, a very mm -hmm. specific moment. Mm -hmm, and I was mm -hmm. so curious about like mm -hmm. how that journey mm -hmm. would continue to unfold as you were collecting experiences and negotiating and figuring mm -hmm, out what mm -hmm, those negotiate, mm -hmm, ne negotiations were. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I just, I was excited for you because mm -hmm. you were all the way present. <laughs> you were very aware of everything that was happening. And I was like, Nobody ain't gonna pull anything over this one. So y'all better watch out. Y'all better watch out. I love that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really glad that we um are continuing our conversation. Mm -hmm. And this Absolutely. has been such a beautiful way mm -hmm. to 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 celebrate myself. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for that. Thank you. Oh my gosh. You are so very welcome. You are eternally welcome. Thank you. Um and yes, we'll do it again soon. We'll continue the conversation. I love you, sister. We love you. Love you We're here for you. And all the things, all the things, all the things. Mm, thank you, LA. You're very welcome. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>